Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Susan Weinstein, and I'm chair of the Board of Commissioners for the Woodland Housing Authority. Today is, to the best of my knowledge, January 20th, 2023. Close enough. Um, and it's right around nine o'clock. So we'll call the meeting to order. And I'm very pleased to be joined by fellow commissioners, Mary Antes, Marie Eisenberg, and Kevin Goodwin, um, by our Zoom meeting manager, and <laughs> by our executive director, Brian Boja, and our program woman extraordinaire, Lynn Poisson. Good to see you. Good morning. Um, as is Good morning. our practice with, uh, and perhaps requirement, with uh, these Zoomy meetings, uh, I'm going to review the agenda and then we'll get to it. Um, We'll start with public comment, if any. We'll go to tenant comment, if any. We'll review the minutes of our uh, last meeting, December 16, 2022. Uh, we'll go over the bill warrant, the debit card warrant. Uh, Brian's going to report on operations, um, including our low-income public housing program, our Section 8 housing choice voucher program, and our family self-sufficiency program. Um, we'll talk about maintenance and capital improvements, get uh, any updates on the Bent Park Fire Alarm System upgrade. Um, we'll make a decision with regard to the HUD savings passbook rate. We'll have an affordable housing update. Um, we'll have general correspondence. Uh, I am not aware of any topics that, I, that were not reasonably anticipated. Uh, we'll set the date of our next meeting. And we will add Jorn. Um, I should add that in here, possibly under tenant comment, we'll um, we'll go over uh, with the Bent Park uh, yeah. Resident Council. Yeah, well, we could do it there, or um, we could do it under oh, the executive director. Yeah. Okay. All right. That's probably that makes more sense. Yeah. Uh, I was thinking that perhaps we might want to have some sort of a continuing agenda item just to make sure that we address any concerns uh, and uh, are able to get input. Okie dokie. Um, is there any public comment? Is there no any public comment? At the, no okay, comment great. at this time. Thank you. Madam Chair. Thank you very much. Uh, and I'm gonna assume that that's also no tenant comment because comment is comment here. Just make sure there's, yeah, there's nobody in the waiting room or the attendees part. Uh, mm -hmm. Brian did uh, advise me that um, the uh, Bent Park Resident Council folks uh, and uh, Maria from the Tenants Union uh, were going to be uh, invited to join us as panelists. <laughs> All right, so let's get to the minutes of December 16th. Okay. All that year ago. And uh, I realize there's a big old empty place for a number that I have not retrieved yes. yet. Did anybody look it up? Because I didn't have time. I didn't have it. Um, what, what number are you talking about? The um, performance review uh, score. Yeah. Uh, would you all be content with uh, approving the minutes subject to me finding that number and inserting it? Yes. It's somewhere very close to five if five is the highest. Yeah. Is my recollection. It's just whether there's a, a decimal somewhere like 4.9 or whatever. I move approval of the minutes. Um, uh, pending <coughs> insertion <laughs> insertion of that number yes okay for the uh, evaluation score yes thank you kevin is there any discussion i mean did people actually brian i didn't have corrections i didn't either it's, that's well, that's right that's I twice think. in what three months <laughs> i was going to say years but we won't go there <laughs> oh, starting off the year on the, the right foot. All right. All right. Um, no comment? No changes? 
No. Uh, roll call vote. Mary Antes? Yes. Kevin Goodwin? Yes. Marie Eisenberg? Yes. And Susan Weinstein is a yes. All right. Um, the bill warrant for December 2022. On page one, I have a couple of things, but to other people. Oh. Okay. Um, for BEF Enterprises. Yeah. Is the reprogramming of the fire panel occasioned by some issue or is it a regular thing or what? No, I, I think it's a, I, it was it's kind of an unusual event. Can I just talk, Russ is on the phone. Can I just see what he's probably having trouble getting into the meeting? Sure. Hey, Russ. Mute yourself though. That's kind of rude, isn't um, it? I'm so sorry. <laughs> Let me just. Uh, oh, you're so good. Uh, um, I have one other thing on that page, but was unfortunately all of my things require Brian's At full input attention. Yeah. because. I mean, it's possible Linda's, but I don't want to put her on the spot about it. Hey, you back? I'm back. Okie dokie. Um, so yeah. the fire panel was some issue. Yeah, we were having a problem with um, th this is a this is a panel that was replaced about five years ago in 2017, and we had a problem with a smoke detector mm -hmm. and enunciator uh, device and. Somehow the panel got corrupted and we had to call in an IT specialist, I guess you would call it, to, to reprogram the panel to get that trouble uh, off, out of the system. Was that the heat detectors at 106 Main, I believe? Yes. yes. Okay, yep. That's, that's the one where the alarm kept going off. Right, right. All mm. right. That's a hassle. <laughs> <laughs> Tell um, me about it. <laughs> I don't think I have to. Um, uh, for those just joining, we're reviewing the December 2022 bill warrant. We're still on page one. Uh, what is the story about the security breach? Yeah, I know um, what, ha what happened. Somehow uh, on my computer, my email, got. Uh, I was getting all kinds of emails and couldn't stop the email so we had to uh get our um it per person who does our computer work to working on this and he had to talk this talk with comcast and it was took a long time to straighten it out but everything's okay and we everything's have, okay now yeah we, but we didn't um tenant information was not at risk not that i know of it's okay. just the emails all right, good. Um, anything else on page one? Did the um, leak cause any damage? Uh, the one at Boulevard Plumbing? Is it? Yes. <clears throat> yeah, that was it's a steam heat system. And uh, there were we had to replace, it's kind of an emergency repair. We had to replace a lot of steam pipes the automatic feed uh, and uh, temperature controls on that unit. But there, there was no, it was in the basement. So it didn't affect, it did, the tenants were without heat for the weekend on the second floor. We offered them to put them up at the Hampton Inn, but they decided to stay <clears throat> with uh, some space heaters that we provided. It was a mild weekend. That's a relief. Yeah. Yep. All right, uh, other things on page one, page two, page three, page four. Uh, just a note with regard to Metro West Ruder Man, not surprised to see that uh, it involves a unit at Ben Park. Yeah, we, we have this problem. Yeah, people are flushing wipes down. They they say on these they're disposable. You can flush. They're flushable, but they're not. 
and uh, building Correct. for somebody. Um, we we found a lot of um, wipes when they caught in the filter and uh, backed up into some of the first floor apartments into the bathtubs and. Um, also, there was somebody threw a plant down there because you could see all the little styrofoam balls from a, a must have been a plant. So, but we just had the whole system pumped out yesterday, as a matter of fact, and it, it looked pretty good. So we we had sent out um, a memo to all the people in Building Four, you know that they they've seen multiple times in the past about flushing wipes. And also, we spoke to some families to see if they could, you know, man, there might be some communication problems there. So, see if they could man help us manage that. Great. I hope they were amenable. Yeah. Um. So we'll see the bill for that pumping next month. Right. But that this uh, annual this is a sem semi annual pumping. It's a routine maintenance. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, I'm moving page five. One of the, sorry, one of the painting units was significantly more than the other. Yeah, they had to, um, it was a turnover. Some of a, a tenant who had been there over tw probably 30 years now that I think of it. Wow. It was, a, it, it was a lot of cleaning and, um, I took a couple of coats of paint and primer. Okie dokie. Uh, anybody else? I was going to ask um, for the safety insurance, the truck insurance. Yes. Is that on the old truck? Both trucks. No, oh, I was going to say, because yeah. that's like more than the value of the old truck. <laughs> 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 but you still need insurance yes mm -hmm. and <laughs> all right anything mm -hmm. else on page uh six or eight whatever we're up to oh my god six last page uh is there a motion to approve the bill warrant in the amount of four that forty seven thousand five hundred seventy dollars and twenty cents for december 2022 Move approval. Thank you. Second. Thank you. Any further discussion? Uh, roll call vote. Mary Antes. Yes. Kevin Goodwin. Yes. Marie Eisenberg. Yes. Susan Weinstein is a yes. Look at you go, Brian. All right. Debit card warrant. December 2022, $1,173.46. You know, the jump is that we're buying gas using a debit card. So that's, uh, we lost Lloyd's, uh, we were buying gas from Lloyd's and they no longer pump gas. So we're going to uh, Cumberland, Cumberland Farms, yeah. What's the credit? Oh, um, there was, uh, uh, there was an agency out there that was supposed to help us um, it's part of the system for awards management, which is a HUD um, program that anybody who gets a grant from from HUD has to be a, be updated on this program. And they were supposed to. It's very complicated. And they were supposed to help us, and I ended up doing it myself with the help of uh, a technician. But so um, I I asked them for a refund, and they gave us a refund. Nice. Very nice. Very nice. So despite that, it's still one of our more expensive uh, debit card warrants. Yep. Yes. Yeah. Holiday parties. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So well. I have approval of the uh, debit card warrant in the amount of one thousand one hundred seventy-three dollars and forty-six cents. For December 2022? Yes. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. Any discussion? Uh, let's have a roll call vote. Mary Antes? Yes. Kevin Goodwin? Yes. Marie Eisenberg? 
Yes. And Susan Weinstein is a yes. Thanks for the credit. That was very helpful. Yes. Credit is appreciated. No credit where credit is due. (laughs) Uh, Okay. We're up to executive director's report of operations. Take it away, Brian. Well, um, Let's see, our tenant account receivables turned out to be okay. When we take out, we were allowed to um, not count uh, tenants who are in repayment agreements from our totals. So um, that makes a big difference in our, uh, our thing. Can I? Thank you, for, thank you for saying that you were allowed to do that because I wasn't sure if you were just trying to make us think it was better. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what like, they say about numbers, right? Can I just talk to Russ? He's having mm-hmm. trouble. Sure. Sorry. Um. <clears throat> hey, Russ. You can't get in? Brian, mute. Or mute Brian, as we say. No, I don't have that. Okay. I always look to see if I have the power. I don't know. Um. Uh- <clears throat> nice pictures. Hey, Lynn, what were all the presents um, for? Let me see. Uh, uh, the children of our scattered sites. Nice. Uh, let, let, hang on. Um, Brian, so it says notification gateway, right? So did you click on the, the join webinar in the blue? And it didn't... Uh, All right. Um, I was going to say yay for the um, uh, FSS award. Yes. Mm-hmm. I, I put a check mark. It's nice to see it go up. Yes. Uh, I don't know the number of the person at town building who could help Russ, but I would think calling the town manager's office would suffice, wouldn't you? Do we know how many um, uh, Section 8 people are at that um, Alta Oxbow? Lynn probably knows. Uh, I'm not sure. I think there's at least two that I'm aware of, but it could. Catherine is the one that typically manages that program, so she would have a more accurate number. Uh, Thank you. If someone has a a, a voucher issued by from another town, and they come to live in Wayland, do we know about that? We get we get an, a fee. I don't remember. Um, it depends on how they come. Sometimes they just come and they remain with their current housing authority, so there wouldn't be any fees involved. Okay. <clears throat> I think one thing that the um, town should do is on that page, on that page of um, public body meeting, they should put a thing that says, if you're having trouble connecting, if, <laughs> you know, yes, contact us here. Absolutely. It's not, like, it's not like Brian can do anything, you know? Yeah. yeah. I, I, uh, Russ is going to call the, t- the Chris Costello of the town. Perfect. Um, okay, uh, so we already said good things about the FSS program. Mary mm-hmm. had a question about, uh, do we know how many people with Section 8 vouchers have moved into Alta? Alta um, Oxbow. I said that I knew of two, but I don't manage the program, yeah. so it could be more Catherine would know. Yeah. Okay. I think it was just a curiosity thing. Mm-hmm. I think you find this, and there, there are, uh, I know there are vouchers from other housing authorities moving into Alta Oxbow. I mean, there's a, a real affordability problem with 80% area median income. Uh, it's even, you know, even at 80%, it's still not quite affordable if you if you fall in that window. So, so that, yeah. That's the attractive thing about St. Anne's if you're doing 30 to 60% AMI. Um, 
uh, 30 to 50 percent AMI, but at 80 percent, it's still uh, it's still hard to 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 move into if being that income eligible and live in those units. Well, I think um, I thought uh, the St. Anne's thing was 30, 50, and 60. Okay. I didn't, is it? Yeah. Uh, it's a range. 50. What is it? As Susan has said, it's 30, 50, and 60, and okay. the average is 50. Okay. Okay. That's right. It's a good step. We'll see if yes. we can make it work. Yeah. Which reminds me, I have to write a letter. Mary. <laughs> um, okay, Brian, uh, yes. with the AED devices, yeah, I'm given to understand that people can, are these the ones that give like verbal instructions on what people should yes. do yeah. if they're using them? Okay. Yeah, and when we get them, the fire department's going to do training at both Constituent and Bent Park. I was reading about these and it was like, there's a difference between a heart attack and what are these supposed to be for? Refib? Uh, I forget what the term is, but cardiac fibrillation or um, and it made it sound like this wouldn't help in a heart attack, but it would with the other because you need to reset the and I'm like, how would you know? So I'm assuming that if like you put the paddles on someone, then the defibrillator would tell you whether or not you should zap them. Yeah, yeah. It, it does. It does. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, so our um, our uh, uh, financials that we have from you are as of November. Right. Okay. Uh, anything that we need to know? Ooh, you have any previews for December? <laughs> Any previews? No, I think we like, should. What, I mean, what we should look for? I think we should finish. We'll still finish in the black, I believe. So, I mean, some of these line items are over, some are under. But I think, uh, for example, in maintenance, we still will over materials, but uh, that's a one line item. So, um, you know, that will will that will erase the the negative balance there, the negative uh, balance, year end balance. That's a huge amount of balance, isn't it? Well, um, we we I think what happened was is we had budgeted for um, two full time maintenance and uh, one part time maintenance person, and we uh, we went down back in May. We went down to um, uh, two full. We lost the uh, part time maintenance position. True enough. True enough. Okie dokie. Anybody have anything on that stuff? Section eight, housing choice, cost comparative, account aging totals you already mentioned. So that's a relief that it came down. Yep. Um, there's the math. Uh, my comment on the vacancy ledger is two already. Yeah, we'll get, they've got two more yeah. coming up. Yeah. Hmm. Um. Are we? Uh, never mind. Not important enough to discuss. Uh. Evictions and terminations. Yeah, we resolved that issue with the repayment agreement. Nice. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um. Then there's the. Goods, as they goods. call it. Yeah. People, if you have any, I mean, fellow commissioners, if you have anything that you want to mention on these, I'm just saying the names of them as we go through so that if you have something, let me know. Um, ACC projections, section eight. These are pretty boring because it's the beginning of the year. <laughs> it's just yeah, a, yeah. a whole lot of blank space. Yeah. Cost comparative for Ross FSS. And then we get to the thing, the memo from or the email from Michael T. Simmons. Congratulations that HUD is excited to announce 
um, that we got a, a FSS grant. So I'm sure you look, Brian, I'm sure you looked at other communities. Are we doing? I would guess that we're being treated kind of low. We are, yeah. It's no, we're the oh, lowest of we're the, the lowest. lowest. Yeah. Yes. What uh, is the third column? I was wondering about that. The fourth column. The last column on the third, right. Yeah, yeah. Right? Uh, I'm not sure, and I, I, offhand, I don't know what that is. But, um, yeah, I mean, the, the, I think we have a part time program and the FSS program. A lot of these other housing authorities have a quote full time program. Yeah. So, um, I think that's partially why we're, we're at $42,000. Okay. Well, it's certainly better than it was. It is, yeah. Yeah, weren't we at 17 or something? 18,000, then we yeah. went to 32, page, yeah, something like that, yeah. The next page is the history. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Um, anything else with, oh, um, it seems like there aren't enough Bent Park people here to talk. Uh, wait, there's an attendee. Uh, Genevieve is uh, on the council. Yeah, and um, Margarita, I apologize for getting the name wrong before, uh, can move over to panelist, right? Yeah, it, I, I thought she should have got an invitation. Oh, here she is. There she is. There she is. Uh, are we expecting... Anybody else? Uh, I think Kathy Dodge was planning on attending. Okay. I don't see her yet. Okay. Well, um, when they get here, then we can talk. Okay. But for now, we'll okay. muddle through. Um, <coughs> maintenance and capital improvements? Yeah, we're still waiting for um, the uh, devices are on their way. So I've been talking okay. to... Um, the contractor and the engineer, the electrical engineer, to, to get a start date. So I'm hoping sometime in February we'll we'll start construction. So, so on their way from where? Yeah. I mean, no, we're here. Oh, How hi, Kathy. In? Hi. Okay, hang we're on just here. a minute. Let us let us finish this okay. conversation, please. Um, on their way from where? Uh, from overseas. <laughs> so <laughs> it's been a supply problem. <laughs> hey. All right. Um and here we are. Uh the Bent Park Resident Council has arrived, at least representatives thereof. Good morning. We've been here. We just haven't been able to get in. Okay. Well, then you haven't been here, so uh well, because you didn't let us in. Well, um, just for clarification, uh, I don't have any control over that. Uh, the person who is managing our Zoom meeting is doing the best that he can and probably, I mean, I only just noticed that you all were in the attendees, so, and I had been checking. So my apologies. This is, okay, so this is a great way to start. Uh, welcome. Uh, we've been going through our usual agenda and, um, we said that we'd probably figure out a way to, uh, you know, include the Bent Park uh, Resident Council as sort of a recurring item. Um, so we'll know to expect you. And if you all don't have anything, then that's fine. But, um, you gave us a revised budget. Thank you. Um, I did have a question because I wasn't really clear on, let me pull mine up. I, I didn't intend to make things harder for you. I was really trying to make things easier by giving you a sample. Okay, good. Um, the way 
I mean, I think mileage is probably high, uh, but I was just plugging in a, but I don't know where the conference is going to be. So I don't know. It's probably a safe amount because it takes a lot to go over $50 uh, the way we pay, the way the IRS approves us paying. Um, but the, you said three registrations at $180 per attendee and then one day? That, that's what we're estimating because that, that has not come out yet. Right. None of the information has come out yet. But with inflation and everything, we're, we're, we figured we up that. Um, we also found out that we can't use any of our funds for refreshments. So we took that out and put that toward uh, printer. Printer and other uh, items that are more practical. I wasn't aware that you couldn't use it for refreshments. Where does that come from? That's a federal. Yeah, so, Say that again, Mary. That's in, yeah, it's, federal. A, it's written in rules. Well, that's silly. How else are you going to get people to come to meetings unless you have refreshments? <laughs> <laughs> It's, we have to bring our own our own meeting our own council meetings, and then um, if we do anything, we either have to get a donation or we'll bring it to the to the membership meetings. So well, I'm sorry about that. I'm sorry because I thought that that was a legitimate expense, and so I apologize for the confusion. Uh, I was going to ask about that last at the last time we talked about this because. It's always in federal contracts that you can't spend spend the money on food. Can I just ask uh, for the minutes who the third person in the community room is? Uh, we have uh, we have two more people here. We have Margarita. Margarita's in yeah. the who who is that? Okay. Margarita, Margarita. You're Margarita. Hey, okay. And Diane and I, I Kathy can't is see there? this poor video. Yeah. So that's Kathy uh, Dodge, Diane Marine, and Margarita Morales. And Genevieve. Genevieve's and on a panelist. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Pam Goodwin also is here. Who? I'm sorry. Pam Goodwin. Pamela. Uh, Pamela. Pamela Goodwin. And who is Pam? Who's Good, morning. Who Good morning. Good morning. morning. And who is who is Pam? Pamela Goodwin is a. Oh. Okay, go ahead. I am Pamela Goodwin. I sit uh, on the board for Mass Union Public Housing. I'm glad to see you and meet you this morning. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for your help. Welcome. Um. So the way you're, were you guys keeping the 210 for the office supplies or were you substituting for that? I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. Were you I'm looking at the budget that you guys gave us. And I, uh, the numbers don't carry over correctly, so I was just having some problems with the math. But um, uh, were you keeping the two hundred and ten dollars for office supplies, and then just adding the more for the ink, and adding the cost of a printer? Can I, we, a printer could cost two to three hundred dollars. Are we? Well, we're a, not sure. A reasonable printer isn't going to cost you more than two hundred dollars. I mean, for, for the purposes that you need, the, the housing authority has said that we'll print the newsletter for you. So you don't need anything that's going to be like super high capacity. Uh, so I I looked, I mean, printers you can get from between like 80 and, you know, multi-thousand dollars, but, you know, sort of that lower middle range that would suffice. I mean, I, I just don't, I mean, it's up to you how you spend your money, but I think you know right. paying for a nice printer isn't really a priority. Okay, good. It's up to us. 
We're going to be as judicious as we can, obviously, with the money because we don't get much money. You know, $1,400 is not a lot of money to work with when you're working with a conflict and you're trying to do as much as you can with $1,400. But, yeah, which is which um, is why I was trying to really emphasize that, you know, the housing authority would be able to help with things like printing, uh, translating yeah. notices so that you wouldn't have to budget for that, um, you know, trying to alleviate where we could. Uh, we're working on getting the Wi-Fi into the community room. I don't know if there's any progress on that. Um, no, there uh, isn't. So that would save money as well. Right. And if we have to flip from printer to something else, we're obviously we're gonna we'll do that. Just like Brian sometimes has to do with his budget. So what about the in so what about the in kind internet? We're working on on the internet coming from either Comcast or Verizon, uh whoever is putting it in free in people's units to try and get them to do the community rooms as well. Well, we've been working on that now for quite a while, haven't we? Oh, we get free. No, uh, no, we've not been working on the free program for a while. Yeah. But we do have free Verizon's now providing free internet into tenant units. No, you were working on um, in, in the internet into the community center. No, right. in fact, no. I, you all were asking for it for a long time, but we were not agreeing to it at any point so the fact that it was becoming available for free made it that we were encouraging brian to see what he could do about that uh, so how about just that? My, my my priority what i thought would be the priority for the uh for the budget would be trying to get um representatives to be able to go to the conference or more than one conference so that they could do the learning and then bring it back to benefit the community. That's what I had thought would be a priority. So that's really where I tried to to focus the money. I mean, but the school but supplies the or whatever, but I'm sorry. Go ahead. But the conference is until the spring. So spring and fall. So we'd have to wait. You want to wait until the spring comes so that we can learn how to get the internet in here? No, the, no, the things are unrelated. I was finished talking about the internet. I was going back to the budget. If you want to keep talking about the internet, then let's do it. I'm sorry, Sue, Margarita here. Um, what I would, what I'm, I'm processing this as to your recommendations of how, what to prioritize on their budget. Um, basically, from me working with Mass Union and, and, and with other housing authorities is when they, when the resident organization submits a budget, proposed budget, um, most housing authorities, what they look at is to make sure that the items are, that, they, that they're in compliance with the tenant participation requirements of the use of the dollars that are being received by the housing authority. And that is where Brian would look at the budget and Sue, you looking at the budget and making sure that there isn't a line item in there, $500 to go to a casino or $500 to do a, a huge you know, um, party for the residents and buy $500 worth of food. But yeah, all so, the so other items are um, in compliance with the use. Thank, thank you. Yeah, so Margarita, what I was trying to do as someone who has run nonprofits and run committees and been on the housing authority for a really long time, but mostly my, you know, my outside of this work was because it was their first budget, I was just trying to help them on going through the exercise of setting priorities and really thinking through like what kinds of expenses they might have. I think that this budget is going to look very different than next year's budget because a lot of this budget, the way I had thought of it was to get things up and running. Exactly. Yeah. And I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not saying, I'm not saying that I'm making decisions for them. I'm just trying to walk through, you know, the, the thought process. Yes. And so basically going back to the regulation, 
um, we, you know, um, you're in good, in, in the spirit of cooperation, you try to give them that information, the knowledge of working with other organizations. Um, but for this organization with housing authorities, basically, you look at the tenant of participation, the CFR, um, um, 24 CFR 964 100 or 150 in front of me, where it indicates how you can use the dollars and how you cannot. And then the tenant organization determines as and on how their priorities would be. I understand I'm that. I understand that. I was just trying to have the conversation. Please stop shaking. Um, uh, because, you know, we have a history of uh, tenants wanting to go to the conference. And since, you know, this is something we wanted to be able to make sure that was covered. The, my issue with the with the thing was that I couldn't get it to add up. So I was having trouble seeing what mm -hmm. the dollars were for what particular categories. You're telling me it doesn't have to add up. It just has to be the right kinds of expenses. No, it has to add up to the bottom line, which is 1400 I believe. Right. That's what, 20, I mean, um, $25 per unit. Well, I understand that. Units. I understand. I understand the income just fine. I'm yeah. good on the income. It's just that I didn't understand the way that the expenses added up to fourteen hundred dollars. It just wasn't clear to me. I mean, if it's clear to the rest of the board, then that's great. I don't see the numbers. Um, so everyone has the um, the PDF that we received, right? Yes. And I was just trying to see what those numbers were because there were things that crossed out and things that, I mean, there were changes made to like the number of registrations, but it didn't change the amount, even though that's not how it multiplies out. So mine, it was, it was in part like mathematical. Okay. So we did not get a PDF. We did not. And the other day when Brian this was here. Yours. And the PDF is, is what you submitted. Yeah. This the is what PDF you gave me at the meeting what you submitted. the other day. Yeah. That's what you submitted. That's what they're looking at. It's got a it's right. got a part that's like it's the Crossed sample out. that I gave you with your edits on it and like the the uh, two registrations was crossed out to three and then the 160 is changed to 180 and the two days is changed to one day and accommodations is crossed out and example two is crossed out blah 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 I mean it's what you gave us and that's what we're looking at. Yeah, but it was crossed out because um, there was no need or it was not legal for us to do it. I totally understand that. I'm just trying to see so, the numbers that add up to 1400. That was my how off, how off are we? Well, I can't really tell because because it's it's not right. I mean, I'm I'm perfectly content to approve attendance at the conference and to approve the mileage that it takes to get there and back. I'm perfectly content to, you know. Uh, do what we can with regard to the Wi-Fi. I'm. I apologize for including the refreshments. That was not something that I knew, and now I do. So I'm learning too. Um, office supplies. I just tried to, you know, get you all started in a little office. That's all. So how off are we? You say it doesn't add up to fourteen hundred. What did you come up with? I can't come up with anything because I can't tell what the numbers are supposed to be. For, for example, in the conference, you've changed it from two. Use the figures that are there on the paper. Like we use drugs, you use the figures that are on the papers. The, we use uh, the conferences was changed. It now says three registrations at 180, and that it's one day and it equals 640. If you multiply three registrations yeah. to 180, I it is 540. So Thank the numbers are, uh, do not add up. They're only estimates anyways right now. Like, like your budget, they're estimates. Yes, but they add up to, but the, but we have it so that the revenue and the expenses come out to the same number. And we're just trying to figure out how you're getting to the 1400. I mean, maybe we just say that whatever the balance is, is, you know, in reserve or something like that. But uh, I can't remember if you can carry reserve over. I, I don't know why you can't use the figures that 
that you see there on the paper and just to come up with a, an estimate. And so based and based on the numbers that they projected, it's in compliance. And I know that it seems like it's not a clean copy and you're not able to determine what they what they want to budget their what they're itemizing for. Did Brian say it was okay when you met with them? 2023 is the same way. Did Brian say something? I'm sorry, you guys are talking amongst yourself. It's really hard to follow. No, we're not. The other day, it was fine with Brian to pass that paper in. Okay, well, I'm sure he didn't sit down and, and like do the abacus to figure out whether it adds up. We're just trying to make it add up. Brian, thank you for the work out. Housing, okay, is also projected. Of printing is not an item. If something happens, you have to rob Peter to pay Paul. It always happens in a budget. Right. But we're but just we talking math. It's just math. When you start up with the budget, it equals out. We're, I mean, I think in concept, we we don't have a problem with the items. It's right. the math that doesn't add up. Thank you. They want to, it's 1,400, their math. Yeah, 1,400. Right. So but the numbers income. don't add up to that. Yeah. Could we please get $1,400 in expenses to match the projected income? Projected that we want to definitely go to, which is the conference, and we're not going to the entire conference. Only that so one day where the seminars are okay. uh, ones that we are, have always gone to that we know have the best seminars. And those great. are the ones we've That's great. You know those prices, we will be able to concretely fit that into the budget that we have. We won't know that probably for a couple of months for the spring and a couple of months for the fall. Okay, so how about this? We'll 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 send you back. I mean, I have no problem with approving the line item, you know, the the nature of the expenses. We can we can send back what we think you're saying, and then you can let us know if if it's different. So we can take a vote to approve it. I'm sorry. Can you repeat what you see? You cut in and cut out, so, so we didn't hear the entire your entire uh, sentence. Okay, so I have no problem with us approving the nature of the expenses. My suggestion, and and I'd be happy for us to consider a vote on that. What I was planning to do and offering to do was to send back to you what we think the budget is. And then you guys can either tell us that we're wrong and send us the correct numbers, or you'll say yes, that's right. I'm not. I'm not playing. I just want it. I just want a clean thing that says what your budget is, because that just makes it so much easier as we move forward. And I don't consider this piece of paper a clean thing. But because something was scratched out, Stu. How would you? Well, because know the that? numbers don't add up, and because. I mean, <laughs> I I don't have a problem with there being, you know, deletions. That's fine. It's just but, the I, but I just need yeah, the numbers yeah. to, to add up. Yeah. Is the board okay with this? We'll make it work out to fourteen hundred. How's that? Yes, that's, that's what we're hoping. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. All right. So, is there a motion? I would approve. It. We'll make it work out. Approve. The oh my god, what the categories of the budget and the approximate the expenditures? Items, yeah, yeah. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Is there a second? I so move. Second. Thank you. Is there any discussion among the board of commissioners? All right, then let's vote. And it needs to be roll call because we're zooming. Did Russ ever join us? No, um, no, I think oh. he, I was trying to contact uh, Chris Costello. Okay. Oh, there he is. There he is. <laughs> Rush is Hello. here. Hey, up here. I All have right. Been hey, Russ. We're just in the I middle of uh, going to take a vote. 
Yeah, I heard everything that went on, awesome. uh, and I want to apologize. To, uh, I've been working with tech, and we've been having a lot of issues. But anyhow, happy to have you here. Thank um, you. Nice to be here. All right. Uh, Let's go. So the roll call vote, uh, Mary Antes. Whoops. Mary's. Mary muted. There you go. She says yes. Okay. Um, Russ, you want to vote on this? Yes, I heard everything, and I am yes on it. Thank you. Kevin? Yes. Marie? Yes. And Susan is a yes. Hooray. All right. So um, I will send back to you what we think you meant for us to see. Also, can I ask Margarita, is there a memorandum of agreement that goes along with this? Margarita? Or Pamela? Anybody? Hello? Your sound goes in and out. Uh, okay, I'll, well, I'll, I'll, I'll send her an email. That. I'll send her an email, yeah. And CC the resident council, please. Yeah. Thank you. Um, okay. Whew. Where were we? We were on work we were, um, Did we just finish maintenance? Well, we were up to work orders and... Oh, the service log for the Silverado. I was just trying to figure out what that was. Yeah. All right. Let's go with the HUD passbook savings rate. Okay. Um, uh, we impute income on assets and it counts towards, does it count toward eligibility and rent? Yes. Okay. Yep. Yes. Okay. Um, Brian had given me. Uh, Thank you an earlier version of this uh, memo and I had thought that it would be useful for us to see what the difference would be in terms of the impact on a person's rent as opposed okay. to just knowing what the number of the imputed income was. So uh, I think this is uh, incredibly helpful, Brian. So thank you. Uh, it's in our court to decide what we want to set the passbook rate at within limits. So uh, the proposal from Brian is that we adjust from 0.84% as adopted in 2017 to 4.52%. Yeah, the reason the better reason better. why I the reason why I want to know about the impact on rent was because Brian, you had said this will inc this will this increase will generate a significant increase in rental income for the WHA. And I just didn't know like on whose back that was. So I mean, I, I shouldn't have said significant. It, okay, thank you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's it's not. Although it's we, only going to in, impact a few people. Okay. But we have the the problem is we have unlimited assets for eligibility and continued occupancy, and we have uh, several tents that have significant assets within the range that I'm showing you. Is that a choice of ours, or is that the a federal rule about? It's the state and federal rule. Okay. Yeah. Well, there was a originally there was, it used there was an income limit that they used to set, but they did away with that somewhere in the mid nineties, I think. Okay. Obviously, it was not keeping up very well. But then again, I don't do the calculations for that. Um. Um, did you just say there's unlimited, there's not unlimited income? No, unlimited assets. But then okay. you, you can compute the in, income from those assets. <laughs> you either take the actual income or in the case, if you own a home, you would apply that passport rate to the value, the equity in the home. And um, at, eight, at you know, 0.84%, everybody's eligible. I mean, it doesn't seem socially responsible. Uh, to have those people with significant assets and annuities, investments. Mm -hmm. in not not paying a, a more fair share. Right. Not, yeah, exactly. 
And it's just in the equity of their house. Right. Wow. As opposed to the it's value. It's not even in the appreciation of the value of the house. It's an actual equity. Uh, if they have I a, would think the appreciation would be a better. But wouldn't appreciation be reflected in the equity? Yeah. Maybe. So yeah, I mean, I mean a, equity also is what they actually paid off on. I mean, it, well, it is the, the, the so appraise, the market value affect, of the house, uh, less yeah. than a debt. That, that's, right. Yeah, right. exactly. A mortgage. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so do people have thoughts on uh, making this change? I think I I have too much of an interest in this to be able to comment objectively. <clears throat> Ooh. That's what I think. Yeah. But he's got so. deep pockets. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't <laughs> feel I can vote on this. So that's fine. <laughs> I respect that. Um well as a do you want to make any comment or you just want to butt out? I'm butting out. I said okay, just already checking. enough. I'm butting out. <laughs> All right. Uh, is there any? Motion? Yeah. No, I I move that um, the WHA adjusts the past work, past book rate from the current uh, 0.84% to 5%. Uh, I'm sorry, to 4.52%. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. Any further discussion? Let's vote. Uh, Mary Anthes? Yes. Russell Ashton? Yes. Kevin Goodwin? Yes. Marie Eisenberg? Abstain. Thank you. Susan Weinstein is a yes. All right. Thank you, Brian, for bringing that to our attention and doing those calculations so we didn't have to. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Always a preference not to have to do that one. Okay, what else we got left? Affordable housing update. Affordable housing, yeah. So um, the big news is St. Anne's is uh, moving right along. They decided to go with a comprehensive permit rather than a planned overlay district. Um, well, so, thank God for that. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so, um, the Housing Trust is donating $250,000 towards the project to show community support to DHCD. They need a project eligibility le a letter from DHCD or from Mass Housing. So they're asking uh, the various boards. And I think the trust is going to write a letter of support. The, um, the, board, so the select board is going to write a letter. And I think I'm sure that Housing Partnership, uh, we should probably write a letter also. And support. Uh, the only thing I would ask that we, if they, uh, if they modify the elderly only aspect of the, of the uh, project, because I would like to leave it open for uh, uh, a shared living possibility, if that's ever a possibility. Uh, I see. Can you say what you mean by that, please? Yeah, I mean we have. I mean we see. We've been saying for years. We see a big need for uh, shared living for uh, residents. Even in Wayland residents with cognitive disabilities who, who um, once they turn 22, are really left on their own. And a lot of times they're put in public housing with no support, and it's not a good lifestyle for them. Or they have to travel far, far and wide to find a group home. Um, and with, you know, we have a lot of aging parents come to me all the time looking for help. So we try to help them out as much as we can. But I really, you know, I'm just learning myself about the difference between a group home and a shared living facility. And shared living sounds like it's a, a integrated into a, a rental development where um, the residents, residents, disabled residents will get services. They'll have an apartment with a kitchen and bedroom and be treated like everybody else, but they'll also have support services and they'll have a communal area where they can congregate and uh, socialize. But um, I think it's kind of an exciting concept to me. I'm just learning, I'm learning more and more about this. So um, I, would, I, I don't know if that's a possibility for St. Anne's, if, there, if there's an opportunity there. Um, when one of the discussions I was in, which there weren't that many, um, was that they were considering using a floor for some sort of congregate living. I don't 
I, I don't know that it was really uh, entirely scoped out, um, but they were exploring that and they were also exploring a separate building on the same property right. to accommodate people right. with developmental or cognitive yeah. disabilities. Right. The, when the first half of that meeting, they had indica- they thought it could cause a problem with the t- tax credit program. Was, I mm-hmm. can't really see how it would affect funding like that, but maybe, I don't know. Um, but I think it's, if the right now it's the, uh, the concept says elderly 62 and over. So, um, yes. I know we have a lot, we just built 62 uh, and over is elderly. I know. I know. What the heck? I object to that. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> but, uh, you know, we just built Art to Oxbow as an age restricted development. I mean, I mean, I like elderly housing and I love their concept of um, their, you know, 30 to 60% of the area median income. I, I love mm-hmm. that concept. I, I'm thrilled the Archdiocese wants to do this. Uh, I just would like to leave open the possibility of integrating a uh, shared living facility and uh, units into that building. I think I think that that message has come across consistently from us and from the partnership and from the trust and from the housing authority and and so the the bell is ringing pretty loud in their faces. So I think that we should just con- continue uh, bringing that up. I have a question. Um, who chooses, who administers the uh, support system for the uh, programs? Well, like I noticed there's the ARC that goes in. Did right. ARC, I forget whether they were in on this from the beginning or whether there's some kind of a search for us. Uh, Whatever, yeah, we, we uh, have to find an agency. Nonprofits going to run the agency. Yeah, yeah the agency. We'd have to yeah. find an agency who wants to do this. Okay. But I, you know, I've, I've sent out some emails, and it strikes me how easy this is is becoming. <laughs> I mean, I've got so many people interested in this, and it just it feels like a groundswell. It really does. And uh, you know, I, I you know I I'll. My career, we've been pushing affordable housing, and there's always been a lot of pushback on that. But this is really flowing, and we're finding so many people um, that that want to sign on and want to be part of. I have an email going out that I'll probably try to keep going to to keep people up to date and and, and supply you know data and facts and and, yeah. and what's going on. So. I mean, just if you just look at the high school, the breakdown of the high school, Wayland High School and school system, how many dis- um, cognitively disabled kids there they are, and when in their turn, and a lot of them turn twenty two, and there's nothing available for them. Yeah, but, um, yeah. one of the things that I had heard was that the agency couldn't have another. Um, setting uh, within some number of miles or married. Do you remember that? Yes. Um, and and I, that it was a state Brian, law. Was, Brian was the one who told me that Charles River uh, was n- uh, not interested in doing anything at Peace Lutheran because it was too close to um, uh, their existing facility. Um, is that a market issue? That, that might be a marketing decision. Yeah. See, because I, I I thought I had thought that it was sort of their decision, but in one of the meetings, someone said that it was a law, and I would wow. like yeah. if that's a law, I would like to work that's, on changing yeah, that law because really. that makes no sense. And well, I, I know. Have, uh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, please, Warren. Go ahead. No, a lot of a lot of towns have multiple group homes in them. I'll I'll send out a list of those in the metro uh, area, but. Uh, probably not the same vendor or agency, whatever you want to call it. But um, yeah. it could be, I can't see why it would make a difference. I agree. In, in this day and age, the need is so huge that yeah. I would think they'd grab at every opportunity. Mm-hmm. Okay. And another thing is I think it would be less expensive to get in as far as like the technologies and stuff that they're using. It would be so much less expensive to be able to know that they would set up for a, during construction because that's relatively low cost when you do it at that. And the technology yeah. is usually pretty yeah. uh, 
you know, straightforward these days yeah. as far as a, so it would be really good to do, yeah, at least the, think about that when the, in the plans. And the, the technology plays yeah. into this. It's interesting how it's playing a bigger and bigger role in, yeah. in ser providing services for folks. Mm -hmm. Um, so, uh, and just to clarify, the trust is going to give uh, $150,000 at one point and $100,000 at another, something relative to the breaking of the ground. And then a year after, I think, the year in which they break ground and then the following year. I don't think that that was spelled out precisely, but that is a possibility. I thought that's what we voted. Um, <laughs> I'm, I've been working on the minutes and final. Okay. I don't have that, but I can go back and listen to the tape. Ooh, good fun. Um, oh, yeah. I, can try and find, I can try and find whatever notes I might have too. Because I'm just right there. I think a letter from us, um, you know, talking about how enthusiastically we are supportive of this. And and that we would hope that they would consider uh, a shared living um, concept, something like that. Okay. There is one other little concern that I have is I read in one of the articles that uh, actually it was not one of these. I think it was a subsequent article that the shared group does better when they go in before other tenants because they're already part of the culture and they they tend to be more assimilated at that point so again that just does say that the the earlier that that happens in the process if it's going to happen the better it is for everybody that makes sense yeah, yeah i think it's great because it sets expectations and that's it um, people exactly. people don't right. see it as like changing their environment right. yeah. exactly yeah. yes um okay well, if you all are amenable, then I can draft a letter accordingly. Yes. Do we need to vote on it because they want the, the letters as soon as possible? Sure. Okay. Uh, is there a motion that we draft a letter of support for the uh, St. Anne's of Good Shepherd Parish yeah. uh, so, project? Yep, yeah, so moved. Thank you. I'll second. Thank you. Any further discussion? Uh, all in favor, Mary Antes. Yes. Russ Ashton. Yes. Kevin Goodwin. Yes. Mary Marie Eisenberg. Yes. And Susan Weinstein is a yes. So I can work on that letter and make it, you know, slightly different than the letter that I'm writing for the trust. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, sorry, just have to give myself a note. Um, all right, uh, you got other stuff on uh, affordable housing that we should know? Uh, no, I, um, I should just clarify, I should just clarify one thing. When you said comprehensive permit, not overlay district, and I said, thank God for that, or something to that effect, it's just that the zoning, redoing zoning is a big thing and it has consequences elsewhere. And I'm not to say that that a comprehensive permit doesn't, but it's discreet to the property. It allows a full and fair discussion about a particular property. And that's why Thank I you. prefer that route. And also it does not involve town meeting. Mm -hmm. Amen. <laughs> Thank you so for just the explanation. explanation. Yeah, clarification. Yeah. Do go on, Brian. I uh, just, you know, it's just some uh, housekeeping, you know, a trial, Nike Trout Park, uh, Capital Improvement Request and Willowbrook. Uh, let's see. Um, this the homeowners the homeowners assistance program. Uh, no, I shouldn't say that, but renovation program. Uh, the, the from trust. the trust. From the trust, right? So the trust has submitted for town council review a uh, proposed program mm -hmm. for. Uh, providing funds, if it's a small amount, like, uh, I don't remember if it was 5,000 or 7,500, uh, it would most likely be a grant uh, with no requirement of re repayment, but a request that people participate in paying it forward uh, when they're able. 
And um, if it's more than that, uh, then it would most likely be in the form of a non-interest bearing loan, uh, which can be paid at any time, but would definitely come due uh, when the property is sold or transferred or whatever. I mean, there's if, if the person moves out because it's for owner-occupied units only, um, uh, you know, we look at income, we'll look at income qualifications, you know, uh, but just trying to make it that the bit of money we have can go as far as it can. And just to go back to the other thing, um, the trust has always been interested in finding other people to do the work, basically. We don't have to be the builders. And in fact, we'd prefer not to be the builders. It's just that what we've done so far, we were the builder. Um, uh, but we're very enthusiastic about someone else coming in, Archdiocese uh, office, uh, <clears throat> forget what it's called, uh, Planning and Urban you know, Affairs. Like yeah, yeah. Um, uh, um, and so uh, we were pleased to commit funds from the trust to support the project because we just figured it was a better leverage of our money. All right. Just to clarify. And maybe it'll buy us some shared living space. <laughs> we didn't put that condition on it, but we could talk about it. <laughs> All right. Um, Brian, you got okay. anything else for us? Um, Is there anything in the correspondence that you wanted to discuss? No, just I'm working on Marie's uh, uh, the the waiver for uh, the, the tenant commissioner, which should which should be forthcoming, Marie. Should be pulling out papers to uh, to run for re-election. Yay. Yay! Thank you. Definitely an asset on the board. Yeah. Thank you. That's about it. And I didn't get paid to say that. No. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, Mary, was there anything in the correspondence that we should uh, pay attention to? Um, well, I was just curious about the. A term life insurance. Oh, um, right. Right. Th that's free to commissioners and staff. Um, the HA, uh, HA, how, our housing authority insurance who carry our property insurance and liability insurance offer this. So how I is think that, how is that legal? Isn't that a benefit to us that's worth more than 50 bucks? Oops. Ooh. <laughs> I don't, I never. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> thank you, Susan. I was just going to say, because uh, I guess it's not really a benefit to us um, because it only comes around if we die, but the yeah, conflict of interest also right. affects our, our kids. That's right. I don't know, we've, but we've had, um, I, I don't have a list in front of me who's already signed up for this, but uh, we've been doing this probably for like 10 years now, I think. Really? But that's a good question. That's I uh, yeah, we have I think there's a commissioner or two who are on this. That would be interesting to look into to find out are we or are we not? Uh, that's a good question. I'm sorry that it took me 10 years to figure this out, but <laughs> it's a good it's a good time. No, it's to, a good question. I would have assumed I wasn't eligible, so yeah, it just makes me look, you know, like Righteous. Okay, no. I'm good with that. <laughs> All right. Yeah, no, that's you're a righteous person. Yeah. <laughs> or self righteous, we'll see. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Um, should we set the date for the next meeting? Yeah. Could I say? Okay. Uh, listen, I apologize for my technical disability in order to get in the meeting on time, but I, I just wanted to go back to a particular issue that I wanted to speak to, yep. and that was in the, the vendors in paying uh, uh, almost $1,000, $902.12 for, for rubbish removal. And I don't think we're going to have a decrease in rubbish removal at all. I, I just think it would be a good uh, uh, friendly partnership between the tenants organization and the housing authority 
if the tenant organization be, would be willing to take up a project of finding out the way to get uh, a better results it, as far as it, that expensive rubbish removal, uh, the tenant organization would be the route to go because they see what's happening with the trash and et cetera like that. That would be a, a great, great uh, uh, thing for the housing authority and, and a relationship between the tenant organization and the housing authority. So, so are you talking about possibly EMP? recycling, or uh, I'm talking about in the the bill on page, on page uh, one of six, and yeah. it's the third item down for nine hundred and two dollars and twelve cents. I, I just think it would be a good study for the for the uh, tenant association to find out how we can better and less expensively uh, dispose of our rubbish. Well, you know, I think, the Russ, I think that's our responsibility. Yeah. No, yeah, I, I'm, not, I'm not debating that it's our responsibility to to get rid of it once it is there. I think it is a good partnership that that the tenants organization would be an assistance in and in, in a partnership in that to find out how rubbish is is transmitted around. It's for for their their particular personal health and welfare. And and also the overall all budgeting of the the uh, uh, the trash removal for the housing authority. I, I just thought it would be a good partnership, and and I do agree that it is. I'm not trying to shun a responsibility. I'm trying to help coordinate it and make it better. Yeah, I don't think that that the new resident council telling them to deal with trash is really the right. Well, there's, I mean, there's, there's, there's pretty things to deal with, but this is, since everyone is talking about, uh, about environment and, and, and how to make it better. I wish everybody was talking about environment. Well, you know, you see, there we go. And, and I, I think that this is a way that the, the removal and the disposal of it and who we paid and how do we get rid of it is a good, it's just a good partnership. That's all. Uh, and if it's going to cause a confusion, I'd rather drop it than move it on. Thank yeah, you. I mean, Russ, we've we've had concerns about water bills for a long time. I hear uh, you. And, uh, you know, some of the power bills, I kind of see those as more of a priority than what we're doing, well, you know, how much we're paying for trash. Because even, even if they reduce what they're doing, um, and also just bear in mind, this is only Bent Park that has the resident council. We still have the other you know, scattered sites and everything else and um, Chichut Village. And I think that that's not a great burden to put on them, but well, um, I, but we've definitely seen issues with water and that one, you know, it seems like, and, and also, I mean, at Bent Park, our recurring issue there is what people are putting down their drains. Yeah, that's I, you know? at the, the, tenant, the council meeting on, I think it was Tuesday, we, I brought that up. That that's something that they could help us out with. Talk, getting the word out, and because uh, you know, putting things in writing uh, notices, people are very ineffective. But if they can t talk it up and get people to understand that they they can't put wipes and grease and and whatnot down the um, down the drain, that would that would be one way that they could assist us in communicating that to other tenants. And that, has, and that has like a really measurable impact, frankly, right. because yeah. we have to get people to keep coming out and cleaning these filters. Yeah. yeah. And every, everyone else, the only reason why I brought it up, because that was one of the things on the, that, that had a great expense on the, on the budget there. That's the only reason it was to, to get something yeah. that would or binding uh, and, and working together towards issues that's going to help all of us, yeah. both the residents and the town that's all i hear you so yeah, I it, think, if it's yeah. water, and i i would be an ingredients to water i just brought it up because it was there on the budget yes and, and, Thank and you. There's, there's other routes to go and i agree with you <laughs> awesome you know there'll be some priorities that hopefully we will want to support each other on them and i think it'll be great when it comes from the association and then we can like support those, but I being here at Bent Park, I really haven't heard a lot of um, a, a big push towards like efficiencies and services, like basic services. 
So, um, you know, if we ever, ever get to that point where we're that activist, that'd be great. But in the meantime, I think we can keep the initiative, you know, until we get that signal. Thank you. Um, yeah. Uh, okay. Um, thank you all for that discussion. Next month. Uh, so I've not heard of any change, but I also am not very well connected in this regard. Uh, I believe that we can continue doing Zoom meetings until the end of March. Right. That's my oh. understanding. Yeah. So the uh, 17th, February 17th. February 17th. Works for me. Yep. 9 a.m. Works for me. Okay. Works for me. And, um, and let's make sure that Russ is on the, the yeah. list to get the invitations. He, yeah. I, you know, I wonder if they could also send it to his yeah. um his uh non-town address, email address. I think they have both of his email addresses. He should have got one for both of them. Okay. I only have one email address, but it, it, it's it, that speaking with the technical uh, uh, assistance there, that was that's not the issue. The issue is the, how it's coming in. Uh, the si signals are coming in, and uh, I am working with them on it. And and it's not the first time, and it happens with others. So I I think there's some technical technical issues that they're helping me with and hopefully they will be resolved. Thank you. Great. And I'm sorry, I'm sorry for all the trouble, Russ. Yeah. <laughs> we want we you near you. us. Yeah. That being said, is there a motion to adjourn? Amen. No move. <laughs> Russ and Kevin. <laughs> Was there a second? Kevin did, I think Kevin did. Okay, you have somebody for both? Russ and, Ke Russ and Kevin. Okay. Uh, is there any discussion? <laughs> um, <laughs> Mary Antes. Yes. Russell Ashton. <laughs> Kevin Goodwin. <laughs> Did you say Kevin? Kevin? Did you? Did anybody hear him? Kevin. No. Hi, I'm here. Okay. You're okay with adjourning? Yes. Awesome. Marie Eisenberg? Yes. yes. Susan Leinstein is a yes. Thank you all very much Thank for your you time. And Thank, your you. Thank you all.